Hey guys, Mr. Cheeps here. The wind speed is picking up. Hold on to your default cubes. So as we all know, you can add objects in Blender with Shift A. There are a lot of options under this menu, but the one we will take a look at today is the force field section. Depending on how you use these, this could either be a lot cooler or a lot lamer than the name suggests. Here we have a bunch of different types of force objects, all of which can affect our simulation in different ways. These force objects can affect any physics-enabled object in Blender, meaning particles, rigid bodies, soft bodies, smoke, and the like. Let's add in a basic force object and take a look at what settings we are given. The first one, type, just changes the type of force that is being created here. The basic force object we have now will just push away from itself in all directions or pull towards itself if we give it a negative strength value. There are too many types of forces to cover the details of each in this video, so I am going to link to the Blender documentation explaining each one in the description below. The shape will determine what direction the force object will affect. Point makes it push outwards in all directions. Plane makes it only push upwards, and Line makes it only push to the side. Strength is, obviously, how strong the force object is. The cool thing about this is that we can make the strength a negative value for it to draw stuff towards it, if we want to. As I understand it, flow determines how fast the strength of the force object is converted into velocity affecting our rigid body object. Effect location and effect rotation are simple, they just determine what the force object can affect. Noise amount adds in randomness and variance to the strength of the force, and seed is essentially what pattern of randomness is being used for the noise value. Gravitation makes the force more gradual, I think it does this by multiplying the strength by the force's distance from an object, but there isn't any documentation on this setting so I'm really not sure. Absorption should make the force be absorbed by collision objects, but I've never gotten this to work and there is, again, no documentation on this setting. Your mileage may vary. Now these falloff settings are relatively simple. The shape of the falloff can be changed and what Z direction the force will apply to. Increasing the power setting leads to more falloff from the force, making it get weaker the further an object is from the source. Minimum distance is the radius that the force object is fully effective and does not have any fall off. Maximum distance determines the radius that the force can actually affect objects in. If I drop my cube outside of this maximum radius, you can see that it is not affected. We can change how much each force object affects our simulation by going to our rigid body world in the context menu. This field weights dropdown contains sliders for how much each type of force will affect our simulation, so we can lower things like gravity here if we want. We can also choose an effector collection, meaning that only force objects in the selected collection will affect our simulation. This is really useful if you want to duplicate your objects or collections and iterate on how your forces are set up. So let's create a simple demonstration for how these work. I am going to use two array modifiers on the default cube to create a bunch of cubes laid out on this plane. I'm also going to extrude this plane up and delete the top face so that we have a box of sorts. Next, I'm going to apply both modifiers on the default cube and go into edit mode. I can separate the cubes with P, selecting the by loose parts option. Now all these cubes are separate objects. Now I'm going to move the cube's origins to their center by using F3 to look up set origin. And I'm going to select center of object volume. Now all the origins will snap to the center of each individual cube. We can make all these cubes rigid bodies really quickly by going up to the object menu at the top of the screen, finding the rigid body selection and clicking add active. All our cubes are now active rigid body objects. I'm also going to make the plane a passive rigid body really quick, changing the shape to mesh.
and we should probably add in a force object as that is what I talked about today. Given that all our cubes have the default mass of 1 kilogram, we will need a pretty high strength value. I'm going to set my force object to 500. If you start the animation playing, you can actually move the force object around in real time to mess with these cubes. Pretty cool, eh? If you want to keyframe the movement of your force object, just hit I on your keyboard and select the Lock Rot Scale option. Blender can interpolate between locations if you do this multiple times at different keyframes down here in the outliner. So that is how to use forces in Blender. Remember that these forces are not just for rigid bodies, they are really useful for other simulations as well. In the next episode we will be looking at constraints so that we can start sticking objects to one another. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.